I'm Bill Baruch, and I'm here with my partner, Oliver Slope, and we're the founders of Blue Line Futures, an independent introducing broker, and Blue Creek Capital Management, a commodity trading advisor. And this is a new episode of Trade It or Fade It. How are you doing? I'm doing good. Happy belated Father's Day to you. Thank you. And you yourself. Thank you. First one in the books. That's officially, great. That's so great. Feeling, yeah. Feeling proud. Awesome. Well, <laughs> well, last week we covered crude oil here, wheat and crude oil. Let's pick uh, pick up crude oil real quick. Uh, you know, I, I talked about a trade we saw value in, 75, 79 September call spread, looking to buy that at 90 cents. And I, I mean, we've been trading some of those options August in, in September in, in the uh, CTA that we have. Um, one thing that, uh, that that we've been talking about is vol and crude oil ha has been uh, has been low. This is when you want to be buying options ultimately when when you have it down at uh, the lowest level since January of 2022 before Russia's invasion of Ukraine. And um, you know we've seen crude battle this week at, at about seventy dollars. So what, what's your take on uh, on how things are setting up there? Well, I, I like it, and I like looking at the options when the sea vol and the volatility is this low. We are getting the day-to-day -day swing, so it appears there is volatility, but the options seem relatively priced, and I still think there's a lot of upside potential from the market, especially when you get these pullbacks near $70. That seems to be kind of a natural floor in the market. We've seen OPEC Plus kind of defend the 65 to $70 level as well, so I, I like it to the long side on the dips. Yeah, yeah. I think as as we're seeing this month, almost I mean, we're almost we're in the back half of it's June crazy. already, and so so we. Even, I, I think that there's value looking into what Saudi Arabia promised. They're, they're going to take another million barrels off of production come July. And we saw them put their money where their mouth is last week. We noted with the OPEC monthly report where OPEC uh, uh, production in May fell 464,000 barrels per day. And Saudi Arabia cut more than 500,000. So they're really pulling their weight here. And I expect them to continue to do that, in, in, as we see in July. Uh, China had a, had the rate cut, as everybody expected. Markets are sort of baking in. I think the second half of the year, we could expect some China growth as well. So I, I have some high hopes for what crude oil can do. And with that low CVOL, which can be found at CVOL.com, uh, it takes you right to the CME page. I've been trading some of the outright calls you know, and, and building them into spreads. I think there's some good value of that. But uh, that 75, 79 September call spread, we, we still like that a lot. I still see a lot of value. It's trading at about a buck ten. So let's see how this week plays out. Crude did struggle as we got into $72. But if we can base here at 70 and move into the EIA report this week, where last week's EIA report was pretty bearish, I think we could see it kind of even out a little bit. And this one could be pretty supportive to the market. Yeah, I love it. I love it. And talking about volatility in the CVOL index, uh, grain markets, it's been the absolute opposite, which is, Right in line with the historical averages, corn and soybean volatility has just went through the roof, back to levels not seen since last July, which fits right in line with the seasonal tendencies. This is such an important time of year. Uh, we're beyond planting, and now it's crop progress, right? And we know that it's been extremely dry in a lot of the Midwestern states, in particular Iowa and Illinois. Those two states alone have historically accounted for roughly a third of production in the United States. So a lot of attention is on those states and whether or not they get rain. And that uncertainty is putting volatility into the markets. But Absolutely. seasonally, we start to top out uh, in the grain market yes. here. Yes. Uh, so if we do get some rain, I wouldn't be surprised to see things turn around. Now, that's a big if. Um, so the trade that I'm looking at and I see value in is the August call option, a risk reversal. So we're selling the August 650 call, this trades off of the September futures, using that premium to buy the 550 puts. Now selling options isn't for everybody. So if you've never done that before or want to learn more about it, feel free to give us a call. Uh, but that uh, risk reversal net cost is zero. Yeah, yeah it's at zero. And we, we, we put that on the CTA today. We, I, I like that trade a lot. Um, and, and really my sort of leash on it is is in, in a very short term, if, if it goes 20 cents against me, um, you know, where that spread is, is worth 20 cents, uh, then, then I'm, I'm probably going to be getting out of that and taking my loss on it. But ultimately, um, you know, the way I'm looking at it is is that market as well. Like you said, tops out seasonally here in June. You get this nice usual spurt into June and, and corn, and a lot of people get excited for that. But that's really when you want to be looking to hedge a lot of the time. And uh, so I, I think uh, right now there's a lot of – I think that's a good good spot to be looking at. You see this thing roll over 650. Sell the 650, call it August corn, and then you use that money. You're buying the 550 put in August corn, and you're doing that at about about flat. Um, a lot of resistance up there if that's yeah, 650. Yeah, yeah, 650 was the, the previous resistance going back all the way to September. So that would be ideally where a producer may be looking to sell futures anyway. So yeah. that's, that's where we come Absolutely. up with that strike price. Absolutely. Well, that's where we see value. We're here to chat about it, and you can trade it or fade it.